Good afternoon. I hope you're all well. Um, I'd like to start with a um, scripture in Isaiah 6. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I'm just going to stop there for a minute. Um, yesterday, oh, sorry, six months ago, yesterday to the day, uh, my father passed away. And the day before that happened, I um, finished up at a particular school that I was teaching at, so it was my last day at that school. I was going on long service leave and then had received a transfer. Didn't know where to at that stage, but um, I finished up at a particular school, so there was those endings that were happening at that time. Um, and not long after that, my wife and I made the decision to um, finish, finish up at the church we'd been attending for a very long time. Well, I've been there for 28 years, um, and I've been there less than that. And so we made that decision to finish up at that church and start attending here at Breakthrough. So um, the last six months for me has been a period where there have been a lot of things, a lot of things coming. But through all of that, I knew that there were also going to be beginnings coming out of that. You know, I, I knew that with, with every ending, there is a new beginning. And I'm, I'm starting to see that, that process um, starting to happen in my life now. And I just want to have a look at what happens in, um, with Isaiah here. When the king died, and then this whole process that happened in Isaiah's life in the way that God called him. So um, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And so it's pretty amazing straight up there um, yeah, that, that, that Isaiah had this vision. And, um, and he saw God. He saw God in Lord's glory. And um, you know, this is a time where, where we can also take, take hold of the vision that God has given us. And we can also... You know, see God in that way, you know, when things end in our lives, uh, we can get a greater vision from God through all of that and get greater dreams and desires and, and, um, and goals in our lives. And sometimes things in our life have to end before this can happen, before we can get a new vision. Things need to be you know, finished up with um, and you know, God puts us through that process. Um, the next part of that, that scripture says, and the train, the train of his robe filled the temple and um, the, the Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So to me that speaks of God filling us, filling our bodies. Um, as the, the next step in that process. Um, then a little, bit, a little bit further on in verse 5, Isaiah, after seeing this amazing vision, his response is, Woe is me, for I am undone. Um, which speaks of humility, it speaks of, of laying down yourself before God. And there's, there's other, other scriptures in the Bible where people have a vision and they just fall on their faces before God. God's um, majesty is just too great for them to take hold of that. Which I think is an appropriate response. I think if you saw God and they walked up, hey, God, mate, how you going? Bro, you know? Um, they're all my New Zealand friends out there. <laughs> um, I think there'd be something wrong about that response. I think if we truly saw God, we would be on our faces. We would be, God, who am I? You know? Um, and then it goes on to say, then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. And so God cleansed his life. The, the, next, the next thing that happened after that, after as I had humbled himself, God cleansed him, and God made him whole and, and made him new. But he used a live coal to do that. Again, he had to have tongs to pick this thing up, so obviously it was quite hot. So when it puts this on his lips, that's going to hurt, you know, and sometimes this process is something that is difficult, it's, it, it's, it hurts when God deals with us in this way. Um, but the next bit says, Isaiah says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go. So Isaiah was willing, through this whole process, he was willing, he was willing to, to put his hand up and say, Lord, I'm here, whatever, whatever you want me to do. I'm here, send me. And God responded by saying, go, go and do, do amazing things, I well. um, And so, um, so that, that also speaks of our attitude, our thinking, of our response to God, and that we need to always remain willing. Um, and just what um, David's been preaching on recently um, ties in with that as well. In regard to the Israelites, God brought them out of captivity um, to take them to the promised land. And but not, they weren't all willing. They wanted to get back to the place where they were captive. I don't know why he would, but they did. Um, and, um, and then Lot and his wife coming out of Sodom, I mean, God rescued them from certain death. 
in Sodom, but Lot's wife went back. She wanted to go back to that place. Um, and she was turned into a pillar of salt, you know. So it's so important that we keep ourselves willing to do what for, uh, to do what God wants us to do, so that we can go to the mountains and we can set our eyes upon Him and just really achieve amazing things and do great things for God. Um, through all of this, I just want to go back and look at some of the verses that I've missed out along the way because I think there's another really important process through all of this. Um, some of the other scriptures that I haven't read out from this chapter it says. Uh, God was sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And the angels were singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So this whole time that God was doing this work in Isaiah's life, God was being glorified. God, God has been lifted up. God was on the throne this whole time through this whole process as he is in our lives, when he brings us through these, these processes, dealing with these things to, to call us, he is being glorified. And that's ultimately what it's all about, is to, to glorify God. You know, we go through struggles, we have live holes and our lips burning, we go through this, but it's all to bring glory to God, to lift him up, to put him on the throne in our lives and in the lives of all those around us, in the life of our city and our, our suburb, our community. Um, so this, this, yeah, the last six months for me has been kind of going through this process, still going through this process, but as not finished yet, I'm sure there's a lot more that he wants to do. Um, and I'm sure that there are people in this place maybe who are, who are in a similar place as well. Maybe there are some of you here where things in your life maybe have ended, you don't know why, maybe God's taken things away from you or things have ended for some reason, but I just want you to take heart from this, I just want to encourage you in this, that God is taking you through a process that ultimately will bring glory to Him and ultimately will allow Him to use you more than He ever could before. Um, as long as we remain humble before Him and we remain willing to do whatever it is that God wants us to do. And I um, also believe that maybe this is a work for the church as a whole as well, in that here, here's this church starting new, starting a fresh here in Springfield. Whatever happened before doesn't matter now. It's finished. It's done. This is a new day, a new beginning for this church, in this, in this place, in this city. And, um, and again, there will be this process. God will be dealing with us. God will be doing all sorts of things to make us ready so that we can go out and do amazing things for Him. And as it says at the start, when King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. And, and this church, uh, our pastor and our membership had a vision for this church. They have seen God. They know what God wants to do in this place. So the vision is there. It's just up to us now to remain humble before God, to remain willing to do whatever it is that God wants us to do, because He wants to do amazing things. We can't even imagine the sorts of things that God wants to do through life and through this church. But it really, in the end, it comes down to us being humble and willing and laying our lives before Him and just being ready just to do whatever it is that God wants to do. Though that may be a difficult process, God is doing amazing things and God wants to, to put us in a place where we just will not be needed, but it can be for us. Thank you.